All right, Shalom. We'll start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rekakwadash, double honor to the elders and apostles. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, my Davadada, house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out to make their calling of election sure. And to the Akiman Akwafim who listen and believe in Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh, to you, I say Shalom. So I'm going to jump right into it. I'm not going to make this video very long. Um, the premise is going to be from the this article that you see on the screen, and it's from www.jizchina.com, and it was on other publications, but I just chose this one when I saw it, which is going into the guy that you see on the screen, Elon Musk, and he made a, a prediction here at the beginning of the, the so-called uh, New Year, which is the Edomite New Year, uh, the true New Year's in the spring. But he made a prediction for the for the new year 2022, which has been coined, we know, you know, by Elder Apostle Tahar as the year of turn up. He made a, uh, a prediction. And in this prediction, he spoke about, and as you see it here on the screen, Elon, Elon Musk predicts a global financial crisis later this year, January the 3rd. Recently, Elon Musk issued a relatively pessimistic view on the economic situation in 2022 and it's a very pessimistic view you know the scriptures tell you those that look out the window is going to be darkened and we'll get that through the spirit lord willing it says in other words elon musk predicts that an economic crisis or a financial crisis will occur within a year but he didn't go into details to explain why he thinks why he thinks so and whether there will be something like a great recession it says, or only something ordinary. Now, what's coming is the next Great Depression, which is the, the, the fall of Babylon the Great, right? That's what's coming. Thus saith the scriptures, and we'll get into it. It says, interestingly, Musk made the comment under a tweet discussing global, global unicorn companies. The author posted a list of unicorns and asked how many unicorns will survive in five years. Musk's answer reads, that if history can be used as a reference, then not many people or companies can survive the next recession. And no one's going to survive the next uh, recession or Great Depression because it's prophesied the second great crash from the hills was going to be the fall of Babylon the Great. It's going to usher in, you know, the kingdom of heaven and bring forth Yahweh Shai, you know, and the angels to deliver the elect. So now let's get a few precepts to close it out. Once again, this won't be that long. Now, this man speaking, the spirit being on him, it's through the Lord, putting the spirit on these devils to speak out and say certain things and do certain things. All things is by the will of the Most High, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. So let's show that. Psalm 64 and verse 7. We'll start at verse 7. Psalm 64 and 7, it says, But the Most High shall shoot at them with an arrow, speaking about Esau, Edom. So that's what the Lord is, 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 is um, nearing to do. You know, he's starting the process of shooting by destroying this man's um, economy, his economic system, you know, his economic vitality. The morals and ethics have already been destroyed in Babylon. So what's next? The financial ruin, which is going to lead to what? War, etc. And the complete implosion of this of his system. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it to follow. So we're, we're, we're actually living that out now. Psalm 64, 7, but the Most High shall shoot at them with an arrow. The Lord is doing that now. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Verse, verse 8, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Psalm 64, 8 again, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. So in saying that there's going to be another predicting there's going to be a great, you know, financial crisis later this year is these devils, these Edomites making their own tongues to fall upon themselves. They prophesying against themselves that Babylon is going to fall, that America is going to be destroyed. Verse eight again, Psalm 64 and eight. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee. Verse nine. And all men shall fear. So we're coming into a time where all people are going to fear all these different nations. But the only ones that's going to have faith and, and be strong in the Lord is the elect. Psalm 64, 9. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of the Most High. 
for they shall wisely consider of his doing. See, that's what men are, are going to want to consider, that this has to be of the most high, right? But only the righteous are going to be protected at this time. You're going to have people that's going to be considering that, they, that those Israelites were right, that what they were saying is actually coming to pass because they're seeing it coming to pass now. Psalm 64 and 10, the righteous, speaking of the elect, you know, the Bakarium in the Hebrew, those that have been predestinated for salvation, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. The upright in heart is speaking of, you know, the, the, the upright ones, which is, is, is Israel in its ideal character. The ideal character of Israel is being, you know, shown forth by the elect today, the remnant that the Lord left you know, for these last days. So those are the upright ones. Those are the representatives of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua on the earth, starting with the men of the Lord, the prophets that you see uh, position, you know, giving you this truth day in and day out, week in and week out. So all the upright ones. Now, part of these predictions and what was being said by Elon Musk, you know, when these comments are starting the new year off, Speaking of this global financial crisis, all of that is all is found in the, in the scriptures. All of that is found in the Bible. So let's get it. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Everything that he said is all found in the scriptures. But our people don't want to hear what the men of the Lord got to say. But if Elon Musk or one of these rich men on the platform get up here and speak, then everyone's all ears. It makes, uh, you know national news or international news when these type of people speak. But if the man of the Lord is out speaking, telling you, you know, what's coming and to, pre and to prepare and to repent and get right, the vast majority of our people don't want to hear that, right? It don't sound so sexy. Scriptures say when a rich man speaketh, everyone holdeth his tongue and hear what he saith. But when a poor man speaks, speaking of, you know, a, a believer in Yahweh Shabbat which is known as the poor of the earth, it says they say, who is this fella? You know? People question you. Uh, how do you know? You don't have a big following. You ain't got a lot of money, right? So on and so forth. So, continuing on. So, Lakia, put this thing on um, airplane mode. All right. So, let's continue forward. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. It says, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come night. So, we're supposed to be coming back to the Lord as soon as we hear this truth. You know, and returning to the Lord before the evil days come, the time of Jacob's trouble, ultimately the missiles, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them since the time of the Lord is going to come bring destruction. And people are going to wonder if God is there, if there even is a God, because Yahweh Shah said upon his return, will he find faith on the earth? So many people are going to give up, you know, um, their so-called religions. Only thing that's going to stand is this truth, which is not a religion, it's a heritage, which is the heritage of the Israelites, which is the understanding and knowledge that this place Babylon has to fall and Esau has to lose his power in order for Israel to assume authority underneath Yahweh Shai. Starting with, starting with the very elect in 144,000, the house of David and the unnumbered multitude, which are the believers, is going to be saved. Ecclesiastes 12 and 2, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. And that being darkened is the missiles and the destruction that's coming to the earth. That's what's going to darken the cloud, the clouds and the atmosphere. It's going to block out the sun when you read through various precepts and the moon, right? Verse, two, verse three, Ecclesiastes 12 and three, and the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, which are these men that you see on the screen, these people, your top economists around the world, the people that run the S&P 500, you know, the NASDAQ, um, um, your futures markets, all the people that run the stock market worldwide. I'll read it again. Ecclesiastes 12 and 3. In the day when the keepers of the house, it says, shall tremble. And why would they tremble? Because the economy is about to crash. They're getting concerned. And the strong men shall bow themselves. And the grinders cease. And who are the grinders? The workers. Work is ceasing. And the grinders cease because they are few. So we've seen in the last three months, over 7 million people, you know, have resigned from their jobs. And grinders cease because they are few. And those that look out the windows be darkened. So those are the ones that look out the windows. The prospect of Babylon is looking very bleak now. It's looking very bleak. That's why you see comments like this from people that are very instrumental 
you know, in, in this economy and in, in the world economy, a guy like Elon Musk to say something like this, to predict that he think that this is going to happen, you know, which is once again, their own tongues speaking against themselves. The Lord putting the spirit on them to speak and say these things, right? Ecclesiastes 12 and 4, and the doors shall be, shall be shut in the streets, which are the businesses. It says when the sound of grinding is low, because the workers are going, it's not going to be few workers. There ain't going to be money to be made like that. People are going to barely be making it, barely have enough to eat for the day, etc. And he, and it's going to be hyperinflation and all those things the scriptures speak of, which is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble, right? That intensifying before the birth, the coming of the Lord. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. And the daughters of music shall be brought low. You Israelites are going to be brought to a very, very low position, right? You are the daughters of music. You're going to be brought, brought very low. It's going to be a crying for wine in the streets, the scriptures say, right? So that's what's coming. So we are witnessing, you know, you know the, the epic collapse of Babylon the Great. Let's get into a scripture too, going into what's causing that collapse. It's the book of Habakkuk 2. In verse six, right to the point, and it reads, shall not all these take up a parable against him, speaking of Esau, and a taunting proverb against him, which says the same thing in Isaiah, when you read in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, says we will take up a parable against Babylon, you know, a, a, a taunting proverb, right? Habakkuk two and six, shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, speaking of Esau. How long into him that ladeth himself with thick clay? You look up what thick clay is, you know, and it tells you that it's heavy debts. Heavy debts. So this heavy debt, you know, which is when you look up, you know, um, the national debt, it increases by a million dollars every minute. It increases by a million dollars every minute. So he's he's laden himself with thick clay, with heavy debts that he cannot pay which is going to ultimately lead to war because he ain't going to be able to pay up what he owes to these different nations like China, who bought a lot of that debt, Russia, and many of these other countries. So he's laying himself with thick clay, which is going to be part of the great, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, that great wall that's going to come against Babylon, which is going to be the other nations coming together when you read Jeremiah. It says the Lord's going to send them. Matter of fact, let me just get it. It's in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51, I believe. This is Jeremiah 51. This is going to be that great wall against Babylon. Right? Jeremiah 51 and 1. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, which is America, and against them that dwell in the midst of them, that raise up against me a destroying wind. And I will send unto Babylon fanners, which is going to be the nations, that's going to shoot those missiles, that shall fan her and shall empty her land and the missiles, the ICBMs is what's going to empty this land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about, speaking of the nations. Verse three, against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifted up himself and his brigadine, speaking of all the nations with their military equipment, their jets, their fighter jets, their tanks, their, MLR, their MLRS systems, which are multiple launch rocket systems, submarines, that's all the brigadine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. This is Babylon being is going to be destroyed, right? As you continue on, um, we'll go down to verse 6. Jeremiah 51 to 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. So this is a call, you know, for the elect to come out of this, come out of this place and to return to being an Israelite. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. So we're witnessing the time of the Lord's vengeance. He's going to avenge what happened to the children of Israel. And it's going to be a terrible vengeance that we're going to see. The Lord's going to be like a, like a, uh, like a madman. He will render unto her a recompense, right? Verse seven, Babylon has been the golden cup of the Lord, Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed, which is what's being Pro prophesied and predicted, you know, through this devil. The Lord put the spirit on him to speak. He's actually speaking prophecy. He's not a prophet, but he's speaking prophecy, right? It says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her 
Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let everyone and let every and let us go everyone into his own country. For a judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up to the skies. It says the same thing in Revelation 18 chapter. These chapters coincide very closely because it tells you that the sins of Babylon have reached unto heaven and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. So we're seeing the fall of Babylon the Great, right? So this thick clay, you know, um, these devils speaking against themselves, the Lord putting the spirit on them. All these things show forth. And we're, this is the end of Babylon the Great. Let me get one more. Jo Joel 3 and verse 1. For the days, for behold, in the days and in that time will I bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, which is going to be the, the children of Israel being free out of this captivity. Verse 2. Joel 3 and 2. And I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is Jehovah Shapat in the Hebrew, which is the valley where the Lord judges, which is going to be near the Euphrates River in the Middle East over in the region of Iraq and in that area. And I will plead with them there for my people, for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. So that's what the Lord is doing. The pleading is for his people. What happened to the children of Israel, the Lord didn't forget. And they have cast lots for my people. When we went into slavery, this was done. And have given a, and have given a boy for an harlot and a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? See? So this is the Lord repaying the nations. Continuing on. Because ye have taken my silver and gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their borders. So the Lord remembered them selling us into slavery which is a big part, you know, of the prophecies in the Bible, which is that the children of Israel will be scattered to the four corners of the earth via slavery, right? It says, verse seven, behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. Verse eight, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabines, to a people far off, for the Lord Yahweh have spoken it. So this is what we see, which is the fall of Babylon, which is the recompense of all of his wickedness. So with that, I hope that was edifying to the hopeful elect. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweshai, Bashim Rakakwadash, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweshai, Kohala Yamla, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh Bashim Yahweshai, all praises to our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweshai, who is the God of the heavens and the earth and his son, double honor, you know, Always the Yah to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who are the true teachers of Israel today. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, my Dabadah, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out to make their call of election sure, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh is at hand. And to the Akiman Akwathim who listen and believe on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh which are the brothers and sisters, to you I say Shalom. So Shalom to the hopeful elect.